Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Nameless Art Journal series. In this process, I'm going to be doing a page based on imagination and using my imagination in my art process. And I want you guys to do the same thing this week. So I'm just going to be chatting a little bit about using imagination in our art. In particular, using it to build a page around a vintage photo and to basically create a fictional story based around that photo. So in using vintage photos, we can take clues from the photo to imagine our own stories of the person or the place in the photo. And the funny thing about that is each of us will create a slightly different narrative to one another, even if we're looking at the exact same photo, because it's our own personal experience and memories that are going to dictate how we perceive things. So while one of us may look at this image of the boy and feel warmly about it, Another one of us may look at it and feel somewhat uncomfortable or uneasy for whatever reason. So it could be anything, it could be a stance or an expression, it could be something in the background, it could be anything that can trigger an emotion in you that's going to dictate how your imagination perceives the image. And this is also kind of relative to intuition and the intuition lesson that we did last week as well because we are imagining a story about whatever image we're using. We may feel or imagine ideas about it that even we don't quite understand. So it's using our imagination and following our intuition with what we want to include to narrate a story. So you can use both to come up with some kind of background story for the image. And it's up to you really. You can focus solely on using your imagination and come up with a narrative. Or you can also tap into your intuition and just follow your gut when you're including things in your process. Through this process we can actually begin to learn things about ourselves, we can revisit past experiences and past memories and reflect on why we feel the way we do and how we react to things. So we can use it to be more in touch with ourselves or we can be more intuitive and not analyze it. So don't feel bad if an image makes you feel or imagine negatively in any way either, it's all subjective. It's about us, it's not about the image or the person in the image. It's up to you what you choose to include in your journal. So if something makes you feel uncomfortable to a point that you don't want to use it, then don't use it. Or sometimes we can actually explore those feelings by art journaling about them. So it can be whatever you want it to be and that's the beauty of it. You can use your intuition that we learned to follow last week whilst also incorporating our imagination to develop the page. So in this particular page, I'm making a page that is focused all around a photo of a boy. The photo itself is quite faded, but to me it looks like a little boy in maybe like a party hat or um, some kind of dress up hat and he's got like a baseball bat or something. And he looks very happy for me. It gives me good feelings, I don't get any negative feelings from the photo. And for the page itself, I started building up a collage that I felt was helping to tell a story about a boy and about childhood. I pulled in papers from workbooks, like kids' workbooks or school workbooks. I even had a vintage colouring in page that was previously coloured in by obviously someone else, but I tied it into this page, I folded it up, I ended up adding it on with a paper clip. So for me, I just pulled things that I felt went with the story of a boy. I didn't go into too much detail with this particular page, but to give you some ideas of what I mean by imagination, if you choose a photo, say you choose a photo of a baby, with a baby we tend to imagine very symbolic baby things, so you might want to add in pieces of fabric, like pieces of baby clothing or ribbons. You might want to add in like food packaging, like baby food, a baby food label or like a safety pin from a nappy. But you can use your imagination to come up with things that you find relative to the photo and then find a way to include them on the art journal page in an artful way. So I guess if you think about it, like if you compare the different types of photos that you have, like if you have a photo of a man, if you have a photo of a woman, if you have a photo of a couple together, you have a photo of a couple of children, or you have a photo of a baby, or if you have a photo of a house, or if you have a photo of whatever it is, they're all going to be different. But your imagination is going to take you to different places for each photo that you look at. And so use your imagination to come up with a story and then and then when you come up with a sort of story in your mind or some kind of feeling or backstory for each photo or whatever you feel when you look at it then go through your supplies and go through whatever you have at hand to to help support that story in an artful way 
so going through your paper supplies going through book pages going through whatever you have and clipping out things that you feel are relative to either the photo or the story that you come up with in your mind and again you can have fun with this it can be whatever you want it to be or it can be more personal it can be more reflective of yourself or it can be more intuitive of how you feel so it's up to you what you want to do with it so before you create your art journal page i want you to just choose a photo that you feel like you can imagine a story behind it's kind of like filling in the blanks of what isn't there so we only have the photo we don't have any other factual information so we need to kind of imagine the rest of the story the rest of the story that's behind the photo so i want you to choose a photo and then i want you to go through your supplies or your printables or whatever you have pull out or clip out anything that you feel like supports your imagination and the story that you imagine behind the photo so go through and pull things together and then once you have a little collection of supplies or things that you feel like are relative then I want you to sit down and try and do an art journal page that somewhat tells a story or helps to fill in some of the blanks and kind of gives more information and more story behind it than just the photo on its own. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you will use your imagination this week to come up with an art journal page or you can do more than one if you feel like. In the next video I'm going to be talking more about techniques so just some simple ideas I have for different techniques you can include in your art journal pages. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Bye.